Welcome to uh, Facebook Live, everybody. Um, today is um, what is it? Friday, October thirtieth, mm -hmm. and um, you know, it, 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 same way that we always start. Um, if you're driving, please turn this off. Um, it will be recorded, of course, and um, you know, recorded on Facebook and uh, YouTube. So feel free to look at it, you know, at a later time. Um, we'll give just a couple of seconds, you know, for people to get logged on. Um, people are jumping in here pretty quickly, so welcome everybody. Um, yeah, I, I, Frank's going to do his own introduction, but um, but yeah, just as a way of introduction, you know, this is Frank Lawrence. Um, he's one of the smart people in the company. I mean, it's um, I used to think that it was me until Frank got here. Okay, and so um, he's over, you know, our IT. Um, he's over, he'll, and he'll, again, he'll go over, you know, in more detail. Um, you know, but in essential equipment purchase specialist, you know, fuel, um, you know, that kind of stuff. So um, we're excited to have him. His particular focus today is going to be on the APUs. But, um, you know, if you have other relevant questions or thoughts or comments, you know, feel free to, to share them. Um, we'll wait about 10 more seconds. Uh, we've got about 20 people in climbing, you know, uh, that's joined us, you know, now, Frank, and then um, we'll just get going. Right now, we've got Nathan Elfie. Hi, Nathan. Jack McFadden. Pink Camo. I think that's Melissa. Um, Ronald Guillette. Uh, from Tennessee, Massachusetts, um, all over the country here. So um, give us just a second here. I got to get um, logged into my feed here. Okay, I think we'll go ahead and, and, and get going. Frank, the time's yours. All right, thanks, Michael. So good morning or afternoon, whichever it might be for you. And while we're on the topic of time, I have just a few announcements. Uh, announcement number one, we have a change in time coming Sunday at 2 a.m. So clocks are gonna fall back one hour. Please remember to adjust uh, your regular clocks, so you can also have them set, like your phone typically will auto adjust, your Omnitracks will auto adjust, but be aware that delivery time is still delivery time, and that will be changing after Saturday at 2 a.m. Also, uh, Tuesday is election day. I know most everyone knows a very important day for our country. We do have a couple warnings out for election day. Department of Homeland Security and multiple law enforcement agencies have issued warnings to citizens of possible protests that we may see. And we have a few guidelines we'd like to go over with you for those protests, potential protests. Uh, number one, uh, please plan on possible closure of roads. Uh, two, uh, contact your delivery location and ask about the current conditions. Be proactive. If the point of contact at the delivery site feels it's unsafe, please contact your CSR and or driver manager and they'll provide you additional instruction. Number three, be sure you update your CSR and driver manager on road conditions or issues you're seeing along your route of travel. That will enable us to potentially head off other problems for other drivers that may be going into similar areas. Uh, four, monitor national, state, and local news sources. Try to avoid any downtown or heavily populated areas. Uh, look to our alternative routes. If you see protesters and there are interactions with them, be sure you have your cab doors locked. Call 911, drive slowly at idle speed, and contact your driver management or management team here at Roadmaster Group, Tri-State. Please remember your safety always comes first. So in the event you're in a situation that doesn't make you feel comfortable, please think of your safety. If your action to keep yourself safe leads to missed delivery times, make sure to communicate that with your driver manager and we will work with you and the customers to resolve any issues. And that's it for announcements. Jump right into the presentation. I always like to put this slide up to start to make everyone aware. Roadmaster Group is comprised of three different companies. We have the ATCO, which is our drone fleet, our Roadmaster Specialized, which is heavy haul and also our brokerage division, and Tri-State, which is our uh, one of our DOD arms, and also has waste and commercial customers. 
Another slide I always like, always like to put up is what, what's the phone number we should call when we're trying to get a hold of someone here at Tri-State? Here's our main toll-free number. Uh, and then like Mike said, I'll do an introduction. My name is uh, Frank Lawrence. I know it's virtually impossible to see here from, from the screen, but I've got my email address up there. If you have any questions, it's frank.lawrence at roadmastergroup.com. And you can see the spelling here is uh, L-A-R-A-N-C-E, and Frank just as it sounds. Uh, I'm the Director of IT and Asset Utilization. I have about 20 years of industry experience, uh, much of that with large motor carriers, and I have five years here at the Roadmaster Group. Uh, something unique about me, I'm an Arizona native, not too many of those around, so I'm born and raised here in Arizona, love the state, and right now don't plan on moving. My responsibilities here, are for information and mechanical technology. So Mike had mentioned I work with the specs of trucks, traders, and also our information technology group. I also work with government pricing to ensure the customer, uh, which on, on our side is you, for owners, is are you're getting the best rate for pricing and also for the company that we're bringing in um, maximum revenue. Uh, lastly, I have on here use, purchase, and disposition of assets. So I work with all pieces of our equipment life cycle. Now to jump into today's presentation, we're going to be talking about APUs, um, also known as auxiliary power units. I'm going to step out a little bit of the screen so you can actually see the presentation. These are the items I'd like to talk about today for APUs. I'm going to give you a description of them. Uh, their components, how they're laid out on the truck, de more details about them and maintenance information, along with how they function, the heating, ventilation, and cooling, which is what the HIVAC stands for, how they, we utilize them for power within your cab, and then we're going to get into regulation. So the brand that we use for APU is Thermoking. And, and more specifically, it's called the Thermoking Evolution. We believe this is one of the best, if not the best, unit on the market. It, we upgrade the amp, uh, alternator to 120 amps to provide good power. We have plug receptacles in the cab. We upgrade your inverter to an 1800 watt pure sine wave inverter. And why that's important is because it provides very clean, efficient power to those electronic devices that you want to connect. Whether it be a microwave, CPAP machines, laptops, you know you're getting good quality power that is regulated. In terms of its ability to heat and cool, on the cooling side, it'll cool up to 13,000 BTUs. What's a BTU? Um, BTU is known as a British thermal unit not to get too geeky here, but a British thermal unit basically is the amount of energy it takes to heat one pound of water, which is about a pint of water, one degree. If we look at gasoline in terms of how many BTUs it has for a gallon, it has about 137,000 BTUs per gallon. If we look at that heating BTU at 7,500, what that means is we can run about 16 hours on one gallon of fuel to heat the cab of that truck. Much, much more efficient than running the larger diesel engine. And in terms of what trucks are equipped with APUs, this year we went all in. So every single one of the 97 trucks purchased this year has an APU on it. We also are planning in the future to include APUs on our trucks. Just real quickly, Nathan thought it's important that you were in the, the screen, so okay. we changed it a bit so you can see the monitor and you at the same time. So. Okay, thanks for letting me know. Yep. This is going to be a little hard to see, but I'll point out the individual components. So this is a, a picture of a, a truck here. So within the truck, the APU components are, one, the controller. Thermal King refers to that as an HMI human machine interface device. We'll get into a lot more of that in this presentation. 
Second piece is the evaporator. The evaporator is actually inside the cab of the truck. It's what receives that compressed air and runs the fan over it to cool the truck. The condenser sits on the outside of the truck and condenses that air. The APU itself on the outside of the truck, which has that diesel engine in it, the air conditioning compressor. It also has the uh, alternator and a maintenance switch. That maintenance switch is important because the APUs will start on their own. So if you ever want to take a look at that APU and you open up the cover, I'm gonna back up one just to kind of show you the hinges on the cover to open that up. Let's say you wanna check the oil or just look at the device. You wanna also look to shut off that maintenance switch so that this thing doesn't start up on you as you're in there looking at it. Um, lastly is the heater. Heater's a separate component. We use an S-Bar diesel fired heater. And that's the last piece of the puzzle here. Now to kind of talk a little bit about uh, consumption of fuel and why APUs are so important to us in terms of cost savings and comfort. So your 13 liter or 15 liter diesel engine uses about one gallon per every hour of idle. So that, that's on the cost side, but to me more importantly than the cost side is the uptime side of your engine. And today's engines have DPS, which are diesel particulate filters. Those diesel particulate filters do not like idling trucks. They load up with soot and cause numerous regen issues, which cause you to wait to have to have that cycle completed. The Tri-Pack Evolution has a two cylinder uh, diesel design. It pulls from your standard fuel tanks. At full load with the AC compressor running, it uses 0.2 gallons per hour. If it's just running to charge the batteries, it only uses 0.1 gallons per hour. So one tenth of the fuel of the larger diesel engine. Another benefit is while it's running, it circulates coolant to your diesel engine to keep it warm. It also will keep your battery charged. There's a system in there called an LVD, low voltage disconnect. Uh, in, in the event that it goes below voltage and you don't have an APU, basically you lose power. But with an APU, it senses that low voltage, starts up, and keeps your electricity flowing. We also have a solar option on these. We, we opted for 25 of those 97 trucks to have a solar, and that solar helps reduce, further reduce the runtime of that APU. It provides about uh, 50 watts of charging into your batteries. Uh, at all times when there's good coverage with the sun. I had a question come up about maintenance. How often do these require maintenance? They require maintenance uh, once every 2,000 hours. So what we equate that to is about once a year. Doesn't mean we shouldn't check the oil and look it over, but in terms of actually having to go in for service, 2,000 hours, which is a very extended interval for maintenance on these. A couple reported problems we've had with these APUs so far. Uh, one issue I've heard is the uh, exhaust was pointed slightly towards the APU. It should be pointed right at the ground on the bottom on our trucks. And it actually caused a heat problem which melted the fuel line of the APU which caused it uh, to not run. So we had to get that replaced and further and, and redirect the flow of the exhaust, the hot exhaust. Another issue we found is that with flatbed trucks, We've seen where that condenser piece that sits on the back of the cab is too close to the headache rack. And as a re result of that, additional heat is generated and it's causing that fan back there to go out more often than it should. So we're looking into options there to whether we raise that up to the top of the cab or we increase the spacing to give it better airflow. Go ahead, Michael. Yeah, a couple of comments and questions here. You know, Donna Brown, you know, shares that they love their APU. Um, uh, Pink Camo, Melissa, has a question. Is there a way to make the APUs less noisy? She feels like it's pretty loud. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, not that I'm aware, but what we can do is uh, kind of promote that up to our vendor and see if they may have an option for maybe a, a quieter exhaust. Uh, I, I, I've sat in, in trucks with APUs, and I would agree. You absolutely can hear them running. It would be nice to have more of a silent uh, running APU. 
Great question, though. I'll, I'll get back to you on that. And, and, you know, that's the nice thing about having Frank, you know, here on that. He has great relationships with his, you know, OEMs of, and, and, you know, truck makers and equipment makers, you know, and everything. So it's, um, we may not be able to get, you know, resolution to you today, but, but he has influence in getting resolution, you know, in, in that process. Um, this is a little bit more difficult, uh, not that that was an easy question, but, um, but because, you know, what you do, Jack McFadden is in the solo fleet, um, has a question of when you would expect that the solo would start seeing APUs, um, because, you know, typically the newer trucks would go to the teams first, mm -hmm. you know, and then, it, then he's wondering when, when you would think with the solos, you know, would start looking at seeing those trucks, maybe mileage wise, you know, years. Yeah, so we have them this year, which means they likely will not start hitting solo fleet until year three. Okay. So I would expect about one more year, and then we will start seeing them in the solo fleet. Okay. However, what I would also say is if you're a solo and you're over the road and you do idle a lot, get with us. We'll see if we can figure something out to get you into a truck with an APU. Um, Dennis Ealings is one of our um, um, longtime owner operators. Um, he's wondering if is there an option for owner ops to buy an APU through the company at a discount? You know that that's a great question, Dennis. I actually wrote that one down. Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, what we can do is put you into contact with our representative. Uh, it's, it's Thermo King West, so one of the largest Thermo King dealers in the country with numerous locations throughout the U.S. So if you are interested in purchasing a, U, a APU, please get with me and I will get you in contact with the right people to get you a great price on them. And then finally, and we'll, we'll let the, the, the other questions, guys, keep sending them in and we'll certainly address them. But one, one last one and then we'll keep going, you know, you know with Frank here. Deborah Bayless, uh, when we sit and guard, uh, one, with one person sleeping and the other one, with the curtain closed and the other one person up front, she feels like it, it's hard to regulate the temperature. She, it either cooks or freezes back there is what she's saying. Okay. So any thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm going to go into that in a little Great. more detail because I, I know exactly what she's talking about. Right. Um, so it, give me just a minute. If I don't answer your question to your satisfaction, let me know and I'll get back with you. Okay. Great. Thanks, Frank. Kate Clark says hi from Oregon. Hi, okay. Kate. All right, I got a picture here. It may be a little hard to see, but this is the inside of one of our T680 trucks. And in the red rectangle there, I have that human interface, uh, machine interface device that I talked about earlier. That's the piece you're gonna see that controls the APU. Within the APU, your selections are power and heating, ventilation, and cooling selecting, powering up the unit, your temperature select, your fan speed, and I'm gonna go into these in much more detail. Lock, uh, I wanna talk about a lockout feature on these. So the, an APU will not allow both the diesel engine and the APU to run at the same time. So if you try to engage your APU and your diesel engine is running, it will wait until your main engine is shut off before it actually is willing to start up. Just a heads up on that. I'm also going to get into the heater function. Like I say, it's a diesel fired S bar heater. Something to mention when you run the heater is that the heat will not come out the standard vents. The heater, when it runs, actually has two separate vents. And, and we have an enhancement on this heater that I don't believe any other fleets have. What we've done is we've actually put a Y in that heater that will direct some of that heat to the front area of the truck to help regulate temperature. So that's the, one of the questions that had come up about temperature regulation. Is that vented heat, you'll look, it looks like a little snake and it sits right behind the driver's seat. That intention of that is to actually go in front of the curtain there to provide heat to the front area of the cab when that curtain's closed. The second piece that he, where heat comes out is right under the bunk. So in those areas where heat comes out, those two areas, that is the only place that heat comes out. AC does not come out in the same um, locations, but uh, for the heat, because it's a totally separate unit, 
it comes out both in that area that snakes out under the driver's seat and also a bend that appears right underneath the bunk. Something else to keep in mind, when, when using the heat, that APU may or may not start up. It takes about five minutes for that heat to really fire up and get going. And if you have a good battery charge, the only thing it needs is to pull diesel fuel and to run a fan. So with a good battery charge, the APU may not even start up if your heater's running. It will always need to start up if your AC is running. Uh, something else I've mentioned is the low voltage starting. If it detects low voltage, whether you're running a device or whether the charging batteries themselves are detected, it means that the unit will start uh, in an attempt to recharge that system. Here's a, a blown up close up view of that human machine interface. And I wanna go through each of these in detail with you. That first button, it will start the APU to start it. You hold down that button for several seconds and you'll see a light come on. Within that same button, you have three selections. We mentioned heating, ventilation, and cooling. In the order here, your first is cooling. So you'll choose that if you'd like to run the AC. Your fan is ventilation. And lastly is your heat. Another thing that's important to note is when you run the unit on heat, the fan speed selection knob is inoperable. It is not used. The S-bar heater runs its own fan and cycle, so this is not used. It will not do, have any impact when you run it in heat. This fan speed, however, will work with the ventilation setting and also the cooling setting. The last knob we're gonna look at is the middle one, and that's very standard, just like your uh, dash face button, where you turn to the left for the cool, you turn to the right for heat, and blend it anywhere in between those two settings. There's also a few other lights on this device that I'd like to talk about. One is a standby light. If that is on, typically that means you've got the other engine running and it's waiting to start. You also have an AC light here. It means there's a problem with the AC part of the unit. An alternator light, that means there's a problem with the alternator side. And an engine light, that means there is a potential problem with the engine. Frank Donna Hurst has a comment that and this may suggest is a problem, but let me just read it here. She says, nothing comes out of our hose, but the metal on the bunk gets so hot it will burn you. Hmm. I'm, get, I'm guessing she's talking about the, dis, the you know the distribution of the of the cool or warm temperature. Well, if it's burned, it's probably the heater she's running would right. be my guess. So does that mean the fan's not working? If she's not feeling anything, I don't know what she means by hose, but mm -hmm. is that what that suggests that perhaps there's a malfunction in the fan? Well, there's two. There's going to be two hoses. If you lift the bunk up, there's essentially a hose that's going to come out of that heater. It's going to go into a Y adapter, so it will split off in two areas. The one area will be that diversion right underneath the bunk. The other means it will the other snakes and goes to the kind of the right behind the driver's seat. So if there is not air pushing through that when you select heat, there is a potential problem that needs to be looked at. Okay. All right. So so I hope that, that addresses, um, you know, that Donna, you're concerned. It sounds to me like maybe you have a fan issue, you know, that's not distributing that heat properly, you know, and, there so. And if you would um, give me, her name is Donna? Yeah, Donna Hurst, H-U-R-S-T. Um, Andrew Stroh, you know, is jumping in, and, and, and this is what's great. A lot of times the drivers, you know, will comment and uh, help with suggestions. Um, Andrew thinks perhaps a different hose has come loose, you know, from the back, you know, that's preventing that. So There know. are just clamps that hold them on, so if it were to fall out, there's a potential. Or another thing that can happen is within that area, if you have some supplies, you could potentially pinch that off. Sure, okay. Which would, which would create quite a bit of heat coming through there. Yeah, okay. You know, th this is showing up great, by the way. So thank you. Uh, the last item I'd like to talk about is regulation. Um, this is one piece that I think uh, is really under discussed. 
and, and why I think it's so important is it has to do with you being legal over the road. So the APU system adds about an additional 550 pounds to your truck. There are certain states that will help accommodate for that additional weight for the auto reduction technologies and some that won't. So back in 2005, uh, the Bush Energy Policy Act basically said, hey, we're gonna give you an additional 400 pounds for that APU. Then in 2012, the Obama MAP 21 Highway Bill took and rose that amount from 400 up to 550. However, the application of this is statutory. There are some states that enforce this by law, some by policy, and some that don't allow you any additional weight on your truck. Those that allow the additional weight, that additional weight is allowed over gross or over on any axle. You also need to have a sticker on your truck that basically states the truck is equipped with an APU and has idle reduction technology. This next slide, which I think is a pretty good slide, actually before I jump over to that, I'm gonna talk about the states that do not allow an exception. Those are California, Kentucky, North Carolina, Rhode Island, and Washington, D.C. So here's a map of the states and the exceptions, uh, both by law and policy. The easiest way to look at this and understand it is those states here that you see in purple will give you a 550 pound exemption. The states that you see in green, whether it be light green or dark green, will give you a 400 pound exemption for the weight of your APU. And those five that I mentioned in white, California, Kentucky, North Carolina, Washington DC, and Rhode Island do not uh, provide an exception for the weight of the APU. And those were all the items I had to talk about today. Uh, Michael, are there questions? No, not really. I mean, there's some, some interaction with the drivers, you know, answering each other's questions, you know, that kind of stuff. So this has been great. Um, Frank, we appreciate you. You know, everybody have a great weekend. Um, you know, again, it is um, um, yeah, daylight savings, you know, you know, clock adjustments, but, um, you know, be safe. Um, I put the, the Frank's email, you know, in here, this, I mean, you know, feel free to send Frank an email, frank.lairns at roadmastergroup.com and uh, we appreciate all of you thank yeah, you thank you all very much for joining we appreciate you okay.